Welcome everyone to another broadcast of Middle Creek Foot Football brought to you by the Sports Block. It's a beautiful night here at Mustang Stadium as we're proud to bring you a matchup of top two top teams in the Tri-Nine as the Fuquay Bengals come into town to face Middle Creek Mustangs. It's a big rivalry game for these guys. Huge. And alongside me we have Matt Kimball and Jeff Hudog running color. How are we doing today, boys? Good, uh, great, great. Have, thanks for having us out. And the next and the next person in our in our team is Taylor Ergel. She's going to be running sideline for us as we're going to be sending it down to her all night. As the opening kickoff is about to begin, Mustangs are going to kick the ball from left to right or right to left. And the opening one is low and hard, sent to about the 10 yard line, taken up the field by number 35 by the Bengals. Tries to cut it up up the uh, far side, break, break, breaks a couple tackles, gets to about the 25 yard line, and that's where it's going to be brought down at around the 26 yard line. Woo! And just before, just before the first drive, we're going to start with our keys to the game. Jeff, what do you got for the Middle Creek Mustangs? All right, well, Middle Creek comes into this one 1-1. Uh, one and one. Last week they traveled to Southern Durham and uh, actually lost that game 35-32. A uh, late game comeback, they tried to, tried to come back, but weren't unable to do so. Uh, I'm going to come back to some more key, keys of the game here in one second. Like I said, we have another, we have another member of our broadcast group, Taylor Ergel. I'm going to send it down to her. How are we doing, Taylor? Hi guys, it's a beautiful night at Mustang Stadium. This is our second home game, but our first conference game. The players are excited. The Creek Crazies are excited. Hopefully, Middle Creek will end up with the win. Back to you guys. I'm going to be excited to hear, hear what she has to say throughout the game as uh, the, first, the first play of the game results in an injury. we got a Middle Creek Mustang player down. I'm going to hit a couple more of these Middle Creek uh, keys of the game right now. The quarterback, Salmon, has done a fantastic job so far in this season uh, looking for his two top uh, receivers, Jones and Moore. Uh, Kevin Jones last year was able to put up over 1,000 yards receiving with 10 touchdowns. Uh, Naylan Lopez is also uh, a key player for the Mustang offense, averaging 122 rushing yards a game. Uh, so if those two can continue to perform on the offensive side of the ball, we should see some great numbers posted from them. Defensively, the Mustangs need to come out a little bit hungrier than they did against Southern Durham. Uh, they were down 15 points at halftime in that game, and you know against Fuquay, that's just not going to be acceptable tonight. Good stuff, Jeff. Matt, what do you got for uh, Fuquay? Fuquay comes into this game 2-0, and and two big losses uh, – they have Corey Hunter, who was the Tri-9 Offensive Player of the Year last year. He graduated, as well as Sean Underwood, who was the Tri-9 Defensive Player of the Year last year. They both graduated, so those are two big voids to fill. But uh, you have Ricky Ferguson, who's stepping up at running back. He had over 1,000 yards rushing last year, so he's going to have to step up this year and be the main contributor for that Bengals rushing attack. Good stuff. Second down and one. Jimmy Boyd is the mu injured Mustang. It's good to see him walking off the field. It's going to be second down and two to go on the ball on the 35-yard line. You know, Grover, this one's always, always such a huge rivalry ever since we've been in, in the school, and it still continues to this day. So exactly. tonight, uh, you know, I'm see looking to see both these teams going hard. Inside handoff stuffed immediately as he got to the line. It could be close to a first down. We'll see where it gets forward progress. But good start, good start by that defensive line. And that's Carlton Bridges. He's their short yardage guy. He's in compliment to Ferguson. He's getting about 94 yards a game, and he punches it in when they get in those short yardage situations and when they're down close to the end zone. So he's a really important asset to that Bengal offense. He did, he did his job there as they convert on second and two. It's first down and 10. Looks like they're going to run. They're just going to run a stack offense. They got everybody. There's some motion on the line there. Maybe One receiver coming out wide, wide right. That's number f uh, 82, Hayden Reed. And we'll get a handoff as it's stuffed in the middle immediately as number 44 was there at first. It's Dijon Montague, I believe. That yeah. defense was able to break through that line pretty much with ease that time and shut that play down before it had any room to get outside. Uh, and let me make a quick note about these two uh, you know, crowds that they've brought out tonight. Fuquay is about 10 miles down the road from uh, Mustang Stadium here, and their, their bleachers over there are slammed. they got people lined up along the fence, uh, and they're actually in a blackout tonight, and the uh, Creek Crazies are participating in a whiteout. After that loss of seven, second down and 17 on the ball on the 30-yard line. Motion on there. We're going to inside handoff, cut up the middle. For a good chunk of yardage, looks like they're getting back to the original line of scrimmage on the inside handoff. 
And it's no surprise what Fuqua is going to do. They're going to run the ball the majority of the time, but somehow they were, they just do it every time, and they're, they succeed every time, or most of the time. And uh, they, Also a quick little uh, point there. Their quarterback from Fuqua has only thrown 20 passes in both of these both of the first two games. So, uh, you know, obviously you can see where their offensive game plan is at. Number 10, Evan McNeil, the quarterback for the Bengals, wide receiver, wide receiver out left, inside handoff once again, gets stuck up the line. What do you think so far, Grover? How do you like the, the look of this Mustang defense? It's, it's I think it's going to be a central theme the whole game. It's going to be Shut it's going it to be throat. it's going to be uh, the Bengals rushing attack versus versus the uh, the Mustangs defensive line. And right now that first that first series the, the defensive line did their bit with its with its uh, fourth and five. Perfect. And the defensive line is anchored by Wake Forest commit Josh Banks and uh, Darius Wilkins, two of the top defensive linemen in the conference. John Moore back deep for this punt. It's a low line drive. Punt's going to take a couple hops. It's going to die about the 30-yard line. And it's going to fall at the about the 26. He's looking to pick that up, thinking to hit somebody. But it's going to be at the 26. Mustang ball first down in 10. We're going to take a quick break. The score is 0-0 with 9.08 left to go in the first quarter of play. You're watching the sports block. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And welcome back. First play of the Mustangs drive is going to be a Lopez run. And he breaks up the middle and gets a few yards. It's going to be around the 33-yard line. And Lopez, he started on varsity last year as a sophomore and racked up over 830 yards rushing. He is an important asset to this offense. He's a, he's a short athletic back as it's now second down. He's going to throw up the middle, a, a bullet to number 19 there, the receiver for the Mustangs. That's Curtis Burston. And, and I don't know if y'all noticed that, but did you see the extra effort that he was trying to inch and claw mm -hmm. for every single yard that he could get? He wasn't going down after that first contact, which is something that we did see out of this offensive squad in the Northern Durham game a couple weeks back. Four receiver set spread offense. Takes the, takes the bullet. Another, another, inside, another inside throw. And that's going to be good for about four yards, and that looks like John Moore on the reception. And we had Garrett Latham here for the past three years, and we always had that passing game here. But what Nalen has brought to us that we haven't had is a strong running game, and that really makes a difference. It does. Second down and about five at the 45-yard line of Middle Creek. Four receivers set inside. Inside handoff to Lopez. He looks to go. He looks to get up the middle, but nowhere, nowhere to go. There seemed to be a lot of miscommunication with these three receivers they had on this side. The number five just didn't really seem like he knew what was going on. John Moore, he was kind of pointing out to a couple other wide receivers, so. They need to get this miscommunication issue taken care of real quick. Third down and five at the Mustang 45-yard line. 7.41 left to go in the first quarter of play. Middle Creek's first drive of the game. David Salmon, the quarterback, in for the Mustangs. Four receiver set, three spread out wide right. He's going to take, he's gonna take, the, take the snap, drop back to pass, looking to throw. He gets Ooh. it. He gets it to John Moore, who bobbles it and drops it. That's tough. That's a tough. That's he a, almost had that for the first down. He, he had a receiver open, John Moore, for the first down catch. Couldn't bring it in that time as it's now fourth down and five. And we came into the season with a battle between David Salmon and a senior Sal Salvarese who backed up Latham last year. And ultimately, David has come out on top. He started last year against Southern and played the whole game and is getting the start this game. And it looks like he's going to be our quarterback for the rest of the season. And, uh, you know, de deservedly so. Uh, every time I've seen him mm -hmm. out here, he plays very, very well. Matt Millen, Matt Millington, excuse me, to uh, drop back, and there's a flag on the play. We're going to see what the what uh, what the refs have to say about this one. And Millington is on the soccer team. He stepped up this year as our punter and kicker. It's a false start. It's going to be a penalty on the Mustangs. They're going to drop back to the 40-yard line here on the penalty. Back to the original line of scrimmage. You Ricky know. Ferguson back to receive the punt for the uh, Fuquay Bengals. And he, he came all the way up to the up to the line. I don't know what the what the call was there. 
as Ferguson came all the way to midfield. Very favorable Mustang bounce on that one. Yeah, another that was a miscommunication there with Fuqua because you know I don't I don't know what Ferguson was doing, but ball came to land on the 21 yard line. Fuqua is going to take over possession. First down and ten, like Jeff said, on the 21 yard line, and we're going to see we're going to see it's a const, it's going to be a constant battle all night between the the rushing uh, attack of the Fuqua Bengals and the uh, defensive line for the Mustangs. We're going to see who's going to win this one out as the night comes to a close. And I would say both of these teams seem to be pretty evenly matched so far. Um, Middle Creek has put up 64 points this season, and Fuquay has been able to put up 63. Um, M Middle Creek has only had 35 scored, and Fuquay 39. So, And an inside handoff on first down. It's going to be a good for a couple yards. Looks, uh, looks like a gain of four. It's going to be second down and six on the, b the ball on the 26-yard line for the Bengals. And the defensive side of the ball for the Mustangs is probably where we have the most inexperience because we've got a newer linebacker core and some of our defensive backs are newer. Brian Davis back back behind uh, back behind the quarterback McNeil looks looks like a looks like a big looks like a big fullback and he gets hit immediately as soon as the ball hits his chest. So did the defender on that one. And you were talking about you know having a young defensive squad here, Matt. Um, the Tri Nine actually graduated 38 of 51 all-conference players last year. So if you can imagine that numbers out of all these different schools, that's a lot of people. Uh, and, you know, those are all-conference players. So those are, you know, key members to your team. When you lose people like that, you really look to your underclassmen to fill those shoes and to fill those spots. So, uh, And that's so, not, yeah. not just middle cream. I mean, that's the entire conference is, right. a, is a very young conference. Third down and five, another big moment early. We're going to see what happens here as they go for the misdirection. Misdirection handoff, and it's not getting – it might be close it's for close. first down. It's going to be close. Ferguson on the misdirection handoff there, a little trickery by the Bengals trying to mix up their rushing attack, trying to hide the different looks there. I and think they're going to leave that a little short. Ah. Oh, as, as, the referee, as the referee signals for first down, it's going to be first and 10 at the 32-yard line for the Bengals. I'm going to call that a favorable Bengals spot. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he quite got that first down. 542 left to go in the first quarter of play. It's been all – on the ground for the Bengals, and yeah. even though they're getting a few first downs, you really, you, it really doesn't look like, except for the exception of a breakaway, breakoff play, mm -hmm. that that the that the Bengals aren't getting the better of this defensive line. And, and, and we got a stoppage of play. It's going to be a timeout for the Bengals. We'll take a br uh, a break as well. You're watching the Sports Block. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 5.23 left to go in the first quarter play. First and 10. Uh, the Bengals have it on the 32-yard line. One receiver out, set, out wide left. There's a fumble on the play. We're going to see who comes up with it. Middle Creek says it's theirs. We're going to see We're gonna see what the refs say. And, and it's Middle Creek ball. Fumble on the wow. snap for the Bengals. And they're going to get that on the 30. That's great field position. They need to capitalize on this right here. Uh, and the Bengals, have, their rushing attack has been coming at the Middle Creek defense every which way. We talked about they're doing a lot of misdirection, but the Middle Creek defense has not been fooled at all. And just before, just before their first play of the game, or first play of this drive, we've all, I've always thought that football is a game of moments and anything can change as Lopez takes it out wide. He looks to break it out, and he's swallowed up by three, four defenders. It's all about game of moments, a momentum.